Hello and welcome to another episode. This one is about the Carlin Kit CPC 200 full Android box which also acts as a, both um, a CarPlay, a wireless CarPlay adapter and a wireless or Android Auto adapter. It does both but it also turns your touchscreen into a full Android tablet so you can anything you can run on an Android tablet you can run on the screen. But the one warning I would give is with the, all this great power comes great responsibility because obviously you can run video streaming apps, you can run map apps, you can run things you wouldn't normally be able to run whilst you're driving around. So be very, very careful with this. Um, just concentrate on the road, the usual rules apply, just be very careful. There's a reason you don't get all these features in uh, Android CarPlay because it, it can lead to too much driver distraction and to accidents. Anyway, the warnings are over. What's in the box? It's quite a dilly little unit, and it's small enough to squeeze up by the USB socket and sort of clamp under the plastics out of the way. Um, that was my plan. Um, it comes with. Um, a 4G nano SIM socket, an S a micro SD card socket up to 256 gigabytes, and USB C. Also, in the box, a little manual, doesn't tell you a lot. A USB A to USB C, and a USB C to a USB C, and that is what's in the box. To demo this, I've got to hang it close to the window so I can get my Wi-Fi, so I can do show you the streaming apps and the other connectivity. You can use it with um, your phone's hotspot, of course, because it's got Wi-Fi built in. Um, but to use use it in in proper uh, tablet mode, it's best to just turn off its internal hotspot because that's how it does its uh, CarPlay and Android Auto function. But I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to plug this in and then I'm going to time how long it takes for it to boot to its screen. So and we're off. It's about 20 seconds just to get to the boot up screen. And there we go, 31 seconds to boot up. And that's just for the tablet interface. To get Android Auto to work, um, you've got to coax it and make sure that the hotspot's turned on by swiping down and the hotspot's currently off. So I've set that on, stroke back up. And then there's a linking app. You've got to make sure that's running. And I think it's trying to connect now, so. And that's not too bad. And then Android Auto just works as it normally works, as, as if you've got another wireless CarPlay adapter. And you can load up other apps at the same time. To switch back into tablet mode, you just tap the screen and that white blob turns up and if you press that you can navigate around so you can get back to the tablet home screen or you can go back from an app and we'll do it again. So home takes you back there and to get the Android Auto back on the screen you just click on the auto, auto kit icon. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. The auto kit guy the auto kit icon. So again just there and we're back to the first screen. To switch back to the car and forth if, if you use the star button on the entertainment screen you can press and hold that to program it to do projection mode. Mine's already set to projection mode but you can set it in many other functions but that's what I you can quickly change it by pressing and hold as well so that's that's what I've got so that's there and you can return to the car screen by pressing on that. 
will turn to the Android or type of thing like that. Just to prove it keeps this thing on the screen, I'll just put up the BBC website or something. Of course, you've got to turn off the um, hotspot for the internet to work. See that's on now. And there we have the web browser running the BBC website. And switch back if you have the radio on, just radio. It's as easy as that. You can have more than one app on the screen, so um, if you load up both apps that you want, so if I want cut for example, car scanner to run, which is very useful to have running the split screen. You could also have maps running. You can have two apps on the screen at the same time. So you, you load up the one, and then you press the screen once to get the white blob up. Then you press that button, and then you pick the one you want to have side by side. And then you can monitor your usual dashboard functions that you've got set up, anything customised or anything the way you want it. And you can just drive it down and you can see the state of your 12 volt battery, state of charge and all your other deep dive parameters. And all run them on the screen as you drive around, which is very useful. You can also run the navigation app, uh, Google Maps and Navigate, and that comes through the car speakers because this all, all is integrated into um, Bluetooth. And if you have apps open, it leaves them where you left them because it is basically a tablet. So, here's the one I prepared earlier. So, now if I click on the white blob and the split screen function, then I can just put that next to the map function and that will do my directions and it's more fully function than the Android Auto version you can just do a lot more same goes for things like the BBC Sounds app you can just play um, programs from earlier in the morning easier than having to, you don't have to download them so any, any Android Auto app you can load from the store as long as it's there I mean some of the streaming apps aren't like Netflix but it comes with Netflix bundled um, it's also got YouTube bundled. On the white blob menu, um, that takes you home, that takes you back a level if you're stuck and it's not showing a back button. That allows you to shut down apps. Uh, and that does a voice search. And that is how you get two windows on the screen. Also that gets you back to car mode. What does the rocket do? It's this clearing processes, but the processes are still open, so I don't know whether it's just closing down stuff that shouldn't be open. Um, anyway, those are your extra navigation controls. Be aware that in Google Maps, um, it doesn't let you pinch zoom. But if you double tap, it'll zoom in. And to, to, to get it back to its original level, you just uh, go back. It'll, it'll go looking for the original location where you are at the moment. And that's how I'd get back. If you want to maximize the, uh, an app, just drag it across and that gets it full screen. Or if you've got it on launch down the side, you can just do it from there. Now I'll try closing apps.
No, I think that rocket thing has interfered with it. Any road, you just press the, um, the six buttons to get back to the menu down the bottom. And then you've got loads of things you've got loaded. Uh, video streaming, Netflix comes bundles, and you're advised not to update it because it'll it'll lose the ability to put it on. And you should only do this when you're stationary. I'm just put a bit of Stranger Things on. The Demogorgon. It got me. Oops. Notice that it's not filling the screen in 4K full widescreen, but it's 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 pretty wide, and it's not bad. Now to go back a level or to home, just press that and then home. Um, if I open Disney, you'll see a, you've got ultra wide screen 4K stuff going on, and, it, and you get a wider screen being displayed. So, if I just put a bit of a soaker up, if I can find it. You can also use the download functions because you've got, you've got a built-in 8 gigabyte RAM. You've got a built-in 8 gigabyte memory on this uh, CPC box. Notice it's wider than the, the Netflix uh, widescreen. The CPC box uses the CarPlay um, USB uh, function to actually do all this. So despite running Android Auto from the box, it's doing it all via CarPlay. So if you press the media button, you'll see CarPlay is the only thing you've got there, because that's how it's really doing it. Also, uh, there's some uh, ultra-wide 4K um, YouTube stuff you can play, like this. So I've got rid of the adverts. Despite this display being 1920 by 720, it still looks excellent. And that's as wide as you're going to get this. It doesn't get any bigger. Notice to get back, press the white button and then the back button, and that'll get you back up a level. And then I've got BBC iPlayer and BBC Sounds, and it's a full featured BBC Sounds you've got. So you can look through today's schedule and just play on demand. to school the next day everybody had got it on their phones it was plastered all over social media platforms a number of very small pockets of council and that, landing and that plays in the background once you've got maps or any other apps open so it, it works just as a tablet would right how to close apps down just press tap there i don't know whether that only works in some uh, situations but 
press that green button there and then you can close each one down one by one. doesn't want to go. Uh, you can also play media directly with your preferred media player and I've got my micro SD card plugged in so I can play any music I've got stored on it or videos and you've also got VLC installed. So is the video I did the other day of um, my demonstration of how to get the full resolution but someone suggested that if I tried VLC on this on Android it should be able to fill the screen and it actually does anyway by default it plays these the moment you encounter here with the border but on VLC, you can just press that to get it full screen. I'll just keep on pressing it till it. Kia connects door. Kia, movement that inspires. Every moment is an opportunity. So anything you can normally do in VLC to get the screen big, you can do on the Android version as well. So that says I'm going to recode. I've tested um, te telephony and um, answering, picking up phones, and the button on the steering wheel still works. And to make a phone call, you have to press Bluetooth phone, and that's going inside my phone. And then um, you've got your list of contacts, and that's how you dial. You can also pick up from the same screen, but the button on the steering wheel works to pick up and to terminate calls. So what's my conclusion? Um, I think it's an absolutely great thing to have. Um, compared to the lockdown version you get in Android Auto and CarPlay, being able to do anything and run more apps, apps that don't even support Android Auto properly, um, is a great thing to have. What do they cost? Um, I use technically Jeff's discount code and the link from one of his videos, which I'll put up there, uh, to get mine after currency conversion for 127.22, which is a damn good price, I think, for what is basically a it's a full-featured phone or tablet for that price. I know it has no screen, but um, it works well and does everything you need. Um, this is not a paid review. I actually went out and bought this myself, um, so. It's a complete independent review. People do offer me things to review and I, I don't like to be swayed by all of these offers and I'd rather be remain completely independent. But I think I like this a lot and I'm going to be using it for running car scanner and navigation on a few journeys and we'll see how it goes on those. Anyway, thanks for watching.